Are you of the opinion that everyone should just completely ignore Lauren Southern? Her subs have been going up since her debate with Lance. Um, I don't know that Lauren Southern should be um, ignored. I just think that people should be careful about how they engage with, um, uh, with Lauren Southern. And this is a complicated thing. I think people want nice and easy solutions um, to... Uh, I, uh, I think people want nice and easy solutions to the questions that we're, that we talk about on here. Um, but the, uh, the real answer is that it's really hard to determine these things. It's really hard to determine these things. The, there are times where challenging people like Lauren Southern is unavoidable and it must be done. Um, and there were other times where ignoring them really is the best solution. And I don't know. Uh, on one hand, what if so Southern's rebranding exercise works and she stealthily drags people to the right? I'm, I hate to tell you this, but she's not stealthily dragging anyone to the right right now. A bunch of right-wingers are just, they're, they're just, the, a bunch of people are just going to the right in general. There's no stealth involved. Um, the fact that Lauren Southern is getting support in being rehabbed by left, by left leaning figures, um, is, uh, terrible. And it is something we have to grapple with now. Um, this is something that we've talked about many times with regard to right wing figures that fall out of popularity. Um, there is a risk of bringing them back or giving them a uh, prominence or giving them um, a platform. And it's not just a frivolous conversation because uh, I don't know about y'all, but I think it would be pretty bad if, um, if you ended up with a bunch of um, liberals, like so-called liberals or center. I mean, this already happened once, right? This happened in 2016 in the exact, in the exact same way. A bunch of people who would have called themselves like, oh, I'm I'm socially progressive. Well, all of a sudden they became alt-right, like, like that, you know, because they weren't really socially progressive. They just felt uh, they were they were kind of under the impression that, oh, well, like I have to I have to be quiet about hating gay people or I have to be quiet about not liking brown people. Um and then they realized that because of Donald Trump, they could just be loud about those things. And I feel like Lauren Southern is doing more or less the exact same thing here. Um, a bunch of so-called liberals who, who have sort of like reluctantly been, been cast in this net of liberalism via their associations. Um, it, it's, uh, they're not actually liberals. They're not actually progressives. This debate really made me think about how important it is to know your opponent's rhetoric instead of just researching topic. It's arguably more important. I know this is going to sound really fucking stupid. I I know this is going to sound really anti-intellectual, but with regard to the stuff that we do in this space, it is more important to counter rhetoric than to even know what you're talking about. And, and case in point is the fact that Lauren Southern did as good as she did in that debate. Lauren Southern didn't know jack fucking shit, and she still managed to rhetoric her way into a position. And it sucks. It sucks, but it's just a reality. It's just a reality of a lot of the things, um, the, the, of the type of, of, of stuff that we engage with. Remember, the internet is all about spectacle. It's all, it's all content at the end of the day. Um, and, uh, and as a result, there's a certain level of frivolity um, that, uh, that is always going to be applied. And that means that people don't really take the substance that, that seriously. It is time for us to live through the meme of whether women can produce sexually or only asexually via Lauren Southern's The Myth of Eternal Fertility. So let's find out. Hey everyone, I apologize. My nose is like insanely stuffy right now. It's Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You're a YouTuber. You don't, you're a YouTuber. You don't get to have the snuffly nose excuse. You're not making anything live. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, this is going to be a good faith analysis of Lauren Southern's uh, 
uh, rhetoric and arguments about whether there is eternal fertility, a thing that nobody claims, but that people like Stefan Molyneux and Lauren Southern like to obsess about. Okay? Um, so I hope you're ready to have a very good time and and, and engage in this in 100% in good faith. Also, one of the things, listen, I'm going to make a stylistic critique towards Lauren here. Um, you know, I'm going to make a stylistic critique here, which is that uh, Lauren Southern is obnoxiously smug. You know how, like, you know how people are like, uh, oh, liberals, they're so smug. Liberal, they're the smug liberals. She is the smuggest piece of shit on the planet. She's just like, <laughs> she's always smuggling. It is obnoxious to an unbelievable degree. And yet, and yet, she's going to talk about, I, I guarantee you, that that all of her fans are like, we love owning the smug liberals. And, and just constant smuggling. Oh no, Lauren Southern is back. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, we're making fun of Lauren Southern. Which is what, what you should do. Everyone should make fun of people like Lauren Southern. Lauren Southern is a pathetic, embarrassing grifter who's desperately running from her past and shouldn't be allowed to have a restful future until, unless she recants her Nazidom. Well, okay, that's not fair. Until she recants her mask on Nazidom um, and entirely and devotes her life to better things. I'm serious. I'm actually serious about that. 1488, uh, 1488 bracelet, uh, Lauren Southern is the type of person that should be criticized, uh, always because, uh, she's reprehensible and her actions speak for themselves. But we're going to listen to her arguments here because I'll be completely honest. I find Lauren's arguments hilariously bad. Yo, Sapporo, thank you. Right now, but I guarantee I'll start sounding super ridiculous throughout this video. Oh, so just ignore wait, sorry, it. sorry. It's not when happening. has Lauren been mask on? Lauren tr is trying to put the mask back on, but it's like, it's like trying to put one. You know those, uh, you know those little like novelty, uh, novelty. It, it th there's a SpongeBob gag where he goes. Oh, oh boy, sea nut brittle. And then he opens it up and it goes, brrr, and the eels pop out everywhere. And then he's like, oh. And then he's like, oh boy, sea nut brittle. And he opens it up again. And it's like, brrr. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's like trying to put a sausage back in the casing. Let's continue. It's pretty much been the worst because anytime I sniffle just to try to unstuff it, really people quiet. think I'm like carrying a gun. Uh, are you trying to kill my grandma lady? What are you doing sniffling over there? But I am perfect. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. That's how everyone is. When you walk outside and sniffle, they're like, sick one, plagued one, sick one, plagued one. God, these people are so pathetic. It's like somebody looked at me when I was hacking up a lung in Walmart. Oh, I'm being persecuted. Perfectly fine otherwise. I just have this a is, stuffy that's nose, like, okay? Okay, uh, there's... A I didn't think that the conservatives were going to be able to, like, outdo themselves with regard to, like, the war on Christmas self-victimization shit. But the, max, the mask stuff has truly, truly taken us to a new level of, 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 uh, of, of self-victimization. All right, people? Don't ask about it. Uh, anyways, hi. I hope you're doing well. I certainly am, other than the dumb nose, uh, because I know that this video is really important and has not been talked about enough by people and could truly change people's lives for the better especially guys listen it is incredibly important that you all recognize the myth of eternal fertility a thing that no one has ever believed in will ever believe in ever never ever nobody has ever believed in this not even like, it's not even a word, like, nobody's ever even heard of that. Especially if you are someone who wants to have a family in the future, but you're unsure about when or how you're going to go about it. 
I promise you the information in this video is going to be absolutely vital let's to understand. Find out. So let's jump into it. What is the myth of eternal fertility? Well, essentially it is this modern notion that we can have it all. We can have a career, travel the world, live the single life through our 20s and even 30s, and then settle down and have kids whenever we feel ready. Maybe it'll take us to- Isn't that literally what Lauren did? Isn't this, isn't Lauren literally describing her own life? Like, it's really funny how these people never actually even live close to the life that they say they are. In fact, one of the reasons why Lauren lost a support in the, in the alt-right was because people thought she was a fucking fake trad. Two years to find the right person. Maybe it'll take us 40. Maybe you'll just have kids by yourself from a sperm bank. Who cares? True! True! Who cares? It's your life and you will always have the option to live how you please and True. kids will always be in the cards. True! You want to know what you can do? You can adopt! Oh my god! This is, of course, a pretty lie. I, if you actually think about it, it's a very ugly lie when you consider the replica. <laughs> this is a prepared video! Why would you say that? This is a pretty lie. Well, actually, it's an ugly lie, but I called it a pretty lie. Just edit that out. But it sounds nice. And people like things that sound nice. And also because it sounds nice, it is constantly sold to us by corporate media, government, and universities in our day-to-day -day conversation. So one article? This is one article in one magazine? Is is representative Corporate media, of this? government, and universities in our day-to-day -day conversation. Um, you know, where everyone just doesn't want to seem like they're promoting the idea of a traditional nuclear family timeline that's restrictive or taking women away from their careers. God forbid. Now, you may be thinking... Yeah, God forbid. You know what really sucks is when the liberals, when the liberals tell you that you are... Uh, you know, that, that, that you're supposed to be something more than a bib factory. That is such bullshit. Thinking to yourself while watching this, all right, Lauren, you said this was an important conversation, but this is something that conservatives have like addressed a million times. We have talked about the endless fertility myth. We have owned those feminists. We told those feminists. By the way, just so you know, I grew up in about the most conservative background that you can possibly grow up in. And I have ne no one fucking even gave a shit. And they were actually trad, by the way. They never had to rely on this idea of endless fertility. It just wasn't a thing, okay? There was no, they were just like, God wants, you want to know how the Chad, you want to know how the Chad uh, fucking traditional fundamentalist Christians do it? They go like this. They open up the book and they go, God wants you to have my babies. Now take my dick. And then you, and then the girls go, uh huh, okay, God wanted you to. Yeah. Yes, we told them their egg cartons were empty. No eggs, zero. <laughs> and yes, a lot of conservatives I love and that people Lauren... in more MGTOW or men's spheres have indeed addressed this myth. But in doing so, many have offered up their own little pretty myth in exchange. And that is the myth of eternal male fertility. That unlike women, men are just not affected by the impacts of age. They so what you're telling me, what I'm going to tell you tonight, is that old men, sometimes their dicks don't work. And no one has ever heard of this before. That's why we don't have Viagra, Sinalis, all of these things. You know, uh, Viva Viagra. You've never heard of that before. Nobody knows about this. They become fathers whenever they like. No repercussions. Sometimes this is said explicitly, but often it's just never ever mentioned that men also have a window as well. And this can be very lucrative in more toxic realms of the manosphere where they just get to trash women all day for missing their fertility window. Well, absolutely never addressing their own Peter Pan syndrome well into their late forties. Well, sorry fellows, not today. The eternal male fertility myth is also a myth. It is a pretty lie. And I am not about to 
patronize you guys watching or women watching by telling you all some more pretty lies because it falls in line with the talking points in certain communities or what you want to hear. So let's break this up into three major myth categories. One, biological, two, technological, and three, sociological. Biology. Are we ready? Are we ready to get... Hey, thank you very much, Jazz Dog. Thank you so much for the gifted sub. Um, do we want to, do we want to, do we want to guess whether there's going to be even a drop of biological accuracy, sociological accuracy, or technological accuracy, whatever that means? Well... Let's find out. She is one of the primary focuses of conservatives who debunk the feminist eternal fertility myth. And they just undeniably have a point here. Women have a biological clock. We are only born with so many eggs to be fertilized. And as Tick tock, Lauren, your time's running out. Your clock is running out. And once it's out, then you're going to be a crone. Are you prepared to be a crone, Lauren? Are you prepared? Are you prepared to be a hag? You've only got a few more months. Estimated around one to two million, which sounds like a lot until you consider that every year that egg count drastically drops to the point that when we hit menopause, our oh! ovarian reserve is down to zero. The average Oh my menopause... God, they're just firing the eggs out. <laughs> is between 45 and 51. Now, does that mean women can have kids until they're 44 or 50? Well, technically, yes, but medically, very difficult slash almost impossible, as not only do we lose eggs with age, but their quality also goes down with age, meaning- Yeah, you, if you, listen, if you wanna get gold star, listen, if you wanna get a uh, gold star um, uh, eggs, the way that you do it is you have to make sure that you check your TV in the morning and you want to make sure that the fortune tell teller tells you that the spirits are in your favor. And then you go out to your barn and you harvest the eggs so you can get gold star eggs. <laughs> How many eggs do zero year olds have? <laughs> Infinite. <laughs> unlimited egg you are become egg at age zero at age zero you reach it's undefined you are the egg <sighs> yeah it's stardew stardew valley ovulation rules there are more egg abnormalities so eggs which have complications failures to implant miscarriages and birth defects oh the, the quality of the egg depends on how much you love the chicken damn that's so wholesome these eggs really start to appear after the age of 30, and by the time you hit 40, you actually have mostly abnormal eggs. Oh, abnormal eggs! Shit, what's wrong with them? Let's find out. This is very evident when you look at the birth data in these age groups. Miscarriages under the age of 30 are less than 10%. When we get to the mid 30s, that rate Yeah, you don't run out of eggs. Like, yes, there is there is an increase in uh in potent in risk of birth defects once you pass like I can't remember the exact age, but it varies and it's not guaranteed and it can be screened for. You ne no person runs out of eggs. Like menopause menopause isn't when you run out of eggs. Your body has a certain point and you stop. And the, like Anyway, over doubles and goes to 20 to 25 percent. At the age of 25, there's around a one in 12 That's a 35, risk for Down syndrome. 35 is like 78 percent of all women in their mid and late 30s conceive within a year and go on to have healthy pregnancies. At 35 is when you start increasing mis miscarriage risk and when you start increasing Down syndrome risk. But that's not like that's not it's not first of all it's not guaranteed tons of people have babies after that point and also you that's still 35 that's still a fucking long time do people like like do people not realize that like that's a fucking lot of years to live before you have children like even if you waited until you're 33 you could have three kids before you even hit 35 yeah at 35, you're 
looking at more like one in 350 pregnancies. Now, what about men? Let's take a look at men here. Often when we think of male fertility, we think, you know, men have sperm pretty much forever. They're not like women. They don't expire. Men, yes, you heard it here, folk. You, you heard it here, folks. Remember, the belief is that literally men have infinite sperm. They are constantly blasting out cum everywhere they walk. It's like a mushroom, like shaking off uh, spores. Men just exude it. They're firing it out of their pores at all times. Yeah, shroom cum. Yep. We do not have an empty egg carton meme for the boys for a reason. But I still really think this is a rather inaccurate portrayal. I'm sorry, that's so childish. Men but honestly, Lauren deserves it. <laughs> are still impacted by the realities of aging. I had a girlfriend of mine who was, and hard emphasis on the was here, dating a guy who is a right wing influencer, and he would constantly nag her for losing her eggs as she approached 30. Not that he planned on marrying her before that or giving her babies, just, just the bullying. Which, funny enough, he has just hit 40, and that is about the age that male fertility really begins to decline. While male sperm count is reduced at a very minimal rate compared to female eggs, what Wait a second, look. Sperm motility count and shape decreases by 50% after 50. That doesn't even show, wait, this doesn't even show, it doesn't even start to decline at, until 50. It's 50 where it goes down. Yeah, and what about folks with narrow urethra? The sperm count is reduced at a very minimal rate compared to female eggs. What is often ignored is the decline of male sperm quality with age. The chances of okay. abnormal sperm or birth defects, much like women, all increase with the father's age. Some of the best research on this shows that men over the age of 50 are more than twice as likely to have children with autism. With some studies... This is the definition right here. This right here is the definition of causation but not correlation. We have no fucking clue why that's the case. What the fuck? There's nothing here. Study shows that autism risk is... It. First of all, this is completely contextless. We do not know who wrote this article. We do not know where it's being cited from. Just a screenshot of an article. The article not even properly cited, first of all. Secondly... So let's just let's just point out that manipulation there. But secondly, study shows that autism risk is independent of the age of the mother, complications during pregnancy and parent psychiatric history. Even after taking these variables into account, children of men age 50 or older are twice as likely. If the, if the age of the mother Wait a minute. Hold on a second. If the age of the mother doesn't factor in here, doesn't that contradict what Lauren was saying earlier? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. He's even suggesting that men just over 40 are six times as likely to have kids with autism spectrum disorders. Research has also shown that men over the age of just 45 are twice as likely to have kids with schizophrenia. Now- Okay. Compared with the offspring of fathers younger than 25 years, the relative risk of schizophrenia increased mon mon monotonically in each five-year age group, reaching 2.02 and 2.96 in offspring of men aged 45 to 49. Wait, there's like a whole bunch of... Isn't there like a whole bunch of things that could contribute to that? This is so fucking weird. This is like so, this is such a stretch argument. But some men and what women- What does any of this is so contextless? We'll look at this data and say, so what? I will just freeze my sperm. I will just freeze my eggs. I'll get IVF. <laughs> <laughs> girls, girls are going to be like, I will just freeze my sperm. True, Lauren. Damn, didn't know you were, so, I didn't know you were such a fan of the girl sperm. Live in the age of technology. Anything is possible. Which brings me to my second eternal fertility myth, which is technological progress. IVF, or in vitro fertilization, is a process in which experts fertilize an egg with sperm outside the body. These can be eggs or sperm that were just gathered, 
or eggs and sperm that were frozen for later use. And then mm -hmm. once fertilized, those eggs are transferred back into the uterus and the whole birth thing happens. I personally... The whole birth thing happens? Why is it that conservatives always talk about, like, like we know that Lauren has had children, why does why do conservatives talk about sex and having babies like they're like t like kindergartners? Well, then the whole baby birthing thing happens. Well, the daddy and the mommy will they call they call the they call the stork, um, and then the birth thing happens. I think IVF is amazing. I know people who have had their children through it, and they are so blessed, and I'm so happy for them. But sadly, I actually know more people who IVF didn't work for and who absolutely empty literally just anecdotal her argument here is i know some people who it didn't work for emptied their wallets paying for it to no success and what i find is often not talked about or yeah. known is just how wait, what Do you, wait hold on a second wait i just want you this is stupid even as, even as an anecdote do you know wait hold on a second everybody real quick quick quiz quick quick brain quiz for the for the impos okay ready i'm in a quiz okay here's the quiz what type of person is most likely to seek out in vitro fertilization anybody bum 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 ba da 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 people with fertility issues Niztastic! You got it! People who have fertility issues. So, yes, there is still going to be a chance that in vitro doesn't work because most people who seek in vitro are already struggling with fertility. What? Oh, God, conservatives are so painfully stupid. Successful and horrific this process can actually be. While going through IVF, the intended mother has to inject herself constantly with drugs like Lupron, which can make you so sick you can't even go to work. I remember being shocked. Oh no! You can't go to Wagey KG! Speaking to other mothers about their experiences with this and how traumatic it was jabbing themselves constantly into illness just for failure after failure. And that's another aspect. There are many. I jabbed myself constantly into womanhood, bitch. <laughs> many, many miscarriages in this process. Your chance of getting pregnant on the first go of IVF, uh, even for patients in the peak fertility ages, is well under 50%. Over 43 okay. years, you are looking at 5.2%. Even if you froze your eggs at peak fertility, 25 years old, and used those eggs, that is still no guarantee. You may recall a Bloomberg headline I showed you at the- Does anybody know? Does anybody know, like, how hard it is for fertile couples who are trying to have a baby to have a baby? Did you know it can actually be kind of hard to nail a pregnancy? Beginning of this video. Wow. Freeze your eggs, free your career. Well, okay. the woman featured on that cover, Bridget Adams, did in fact go through this process, froze her eggs in her 30s so she didn't have to worry about her expiry date, and okay. eventually four years after being featured. Okay. I just want you to, real quick, let's just take a second and take that in, okay? Conservatives can never claim that they give a shit about women. When, they, when even conservative women talk about conservative women as having expiry dates expiry dates mm. Mm. damn that's that's an awkward one isn't it Ooh, that's a weird one. that's a that's a weird one in bloomberg at the age of 45 she decided to unthaw set eggs and have her dream baby here is an excerpt from the National Post about how that experience went. She excitedly unfroze the 11 eggs she had stored and selected a sperm donor. Two eggs failed to survive the thawing process. Three more failed to fertilize. That left six embryos, of which five appeared to be abnormal. The last one was implanted in her uterus. Okay. On the morning of March 7th, she got the devastating news that it too had failed. Bridget Bet 
for wait, a dream of wait, being isn't, a mother. So wait, first of all, isn't the isn't the National Post like a far right Canadian magazine? Isn't the National Post like literally basically like fucking Andy Neo but in Canada? On this freezing process, and it didn't work. And she is now out here telling the truth about egg freezing and IVF, which she feels she was not properly told about or educated on. And in my opinion, it's really not her fault. Most men and women are not told these. New CDC d data says now that more pregnancies end in miscarriages than births. I mean, that would make sense, right? Because a, a successful birth takes nine months, but a miscarriage can ha can happen right away, and then it can then you can get like pregnant again like a couple months later and try again and it could make mi miscarriage again that would make sense to me things and honestly i do not think doctors have quite yet mastered this process either currently it is unknown if there is a deterioration of eggs over time in storage in general only six out of eight eggs will survive the freezing process and of the surviving eggs the chance of a live birth is only between 18 to 32 percent so to give yourself just a decent shot of having a kid you'll need to freeze yeah. a lot of eggs that means a lot of treatments and even then there's no guarantee and the kicker most people probably can't afford it anyways per cycle true you know what else you can do fucking adopt you can adopt there are tons of of young kids who would seriously benefit from a home you can adopt a kid if worse comes to worse, you can adopt a kid. So once again, for a single treatment. Oh, but I forgot. Lauren Southern's whole thing is not about actually having kids. It's about specifically about preserving the abstract idea of your genetic legacy. It's not actually about having kids. It's not actually about the relationships with the kids. It's about this this vague idea of carrying on your genetic legacy. Yeah, damn. Damn, her eyes don't look very blue. Do you think she has Do you think she's wearing contacts to hide that she doesn't have blue eyes? Also, her hair doesn't look very blonde. It looks like she's naturally brown-haired and then she has blonde highlights. Huh. Uh-oh which you'll have to have several of for a decent chance of having a baby. Sure. It is around $10,000 in Australia, plus annual storage fees of around 400. In the US, it is a damn lot as well. You're looking at 15,000 to $20,000. Yeah, Even the expensive. cost effective solutions listed in this article are still showing upward of 10 grand plus 600 in storage fees annually. I know okay. way too many people yeah. who will just say, I'll just freeze my eggs as a throwaway line whenever they're asked about having kids. And I just... Lauren, maybe you're making your friends uncomfortable. Have you considered that maybe asking all of your female friends about when they're going to have babies just makes them uncomfortable? And so they just tell you a bullshit line so that you'll shut the fuck up? Have you ever considered that? Have you ever considered that maybe your your friends think that you're a fucking weirdo who goes around asking people about when their when their eggs are going to expire and they want you to shut the fuck up? I, I it's I'm lucky that everyone in my life knows that I'm trans. I really am. I'm so lucky that everyone in my life knows that I'm a fucking unapologetic trans. I almost said the T-slur, but I didn't because no one will ever ask me, when are you going to have kids? Because if they did, I would say, when are you going to suck my fucking dick? <laughs> I do not think enough of them realize what an uncertain solution this can be. But let's get to the last and, in my opinion, the most important factor here. Sociological factors. I know I'll still have some people out there watching and the doubters. <laughs> okay, you all. Okay, listen. You all know that I love doing bits. You know I love doing the speech with the with the eye patch on. I like putting on the hat and going like, my comrades, and doing the bits. Lauren here is 100% serious doing fucking Dr. Evil. Look at this. Watch the shit. Just I know I'll still have some people out there oh, watching yes. and I'm sure I the have doubters who will go, nope, Lauren. Uh, 
you might be wondering about your expiration date. Come on, these people are so stupid. All right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab a beer. You all entertain yourselves for a second. I'll be right back. You're just wrong. Neither of those things you've mentioned will impede my ability to have kids. I'm a woman. I don't care if or when I hit menopause. Empty aid cartons for days. Damn them. Okay, honestly though, this right here is all, this is like Blair White levels of pathetic. Just so you all know, like no joke, <clears throat> Straight up, this is like Blair White levels of pathetic. Lauren sees herself as an egg carton. She, Lauren sees other women as fucking egg cartons. That's that's actually worse than Blair White. It might actually be worse than Blair White. I'll just adopt when I'm 55 once I've got my corporation all set up. Or there will be the dudes out there who have overdosed on manosphere vids who may say, Lauren... First of all, I think your data on male sperm is BS, but either way, I'll just freeze it. And when I'm 60, I'll give it to my 20-year-old bombshell wife, and we'll have 10 kids, and I'll finally take my form as the true Chad alpha dad who banged my way through the entire world, got rich, and settled down when I wanted to. <laughs> okay. This is very weird and also very smug. Do you get the feeling that Lauren is incredibly bitter here? It feels like Lauren is truly, like, truly stinging from something. It's like, I feel like she kind of wants to be the 60-year-old guy, right? Like, she's sit like this face right here kind of says it all. She's kind of just like, yeah, who would want to do that? Who would want to bang their way around the globe? like Lauren did, until they're 60, like Lauren can't, because Lauren believes that she's an egg carton. Um, and, and then just retire and have a bunch of kids without any pressure, because we live in a society that allows men to do that, but not women. Lauren's like, not me. This is room temperature IQ stuff here, guys. Yeah, we're getting some fucking Freudian penis envy here. Dumb on both accounts and completely ignorant of the fact that age impacts way more than just our fertility and having children is not just about the birthing or the adoption. Yeah, Lauren, and guess what? You're getting old. You're older than me, bitch. You're older than me, bitch. You're getting old. You're not going to be so, uh, you're not going to be so popular forever, huh? You're not going to be the, uh, the darling of the online right for long actually you already aren't let's be real but you know you might think of yourself like that process in fact that is one of the smallest aspects of having a kid by the time you're on your fourth month of no sleep after coming home from the hospital you don't even remember being pregnant or giving birth what matters in this process is raising the kid that's what matters and the truth is the longer you wait to have kids even if you're able to have kids into your 50s or 60s your ability to keep up with them to be around and to support them in ways that they need decreases with every year okay I but that's not that is not true that's not true i had friends when i was younger who had older parents who were really good they were really good because they had life experience it's like Lauren literally, like Lauren's attitude towards old people is really weird. They're not even old. Like, like 60 is old, but it's not that old. Like 60 year olds are super, there's tons of 60 year olds that are super spry. So like, this is just projection. Lauren is just afraid of getting old. I am a very healthy 25, ooh, 26. I'm a very healthy 26 year old. Six. Oh my gosh, I'm ancient. I Wait a minute. Lauren is younger than me? <laughs> no, she can't actually be 26. I'm so sorry. I am so fucking sorry. Lauren, listen, as the crone, as the crone in this, uh, in this particular relationship, as the MILF, okay? Lauren, please, don't be so hard on yourself, dear. You're going to be fine. Getting old can be a gracious process. Look, you could look like me someday. I 
a very healthy 26 year old and even I have trouble keeping up with my one year old son and he needs to be outside. He needs to be playing soccer. He needs to be climbing things. And I want him to Lauren, be able to Lauren, that sounds like a you problem. Why are you so exhausted? Why are you like out of breath like a 90 year old? That sounds like something, maybe you've caught COVID too many times from your anti-mask positions. Yeah, I want to help him do that, experience the things he wants to see. And as we age, it's just undeniable that our energy levels and ability to do these things decreases. Even if you are the most damn healthy 60 year old on the planet, this will still have an impact at some point. I'm pretty sure like Michael Phelps at 60 would be able to like to like lap lap Lauren at 26 in anything. Like literally it wouldn't even have to be swimming. Just the passive level of fitness would destroy. Like I just think she's wrong on this. Yeah, the nose picking face. Yep, booger Lauren over here. Let's do some quick math here. If you have your first kid at 50, by the time they are 20, just getting into their university, trying to get their life kickstarted, not settled in any sense of the word, you will be 70 years old. Pretty sure the average lifespan on this planet is only like 72 years. So instead of focusing on their life, career, and kids, they'll probably be busy trying to take care of you. That is, if you are in a happy and healthy relationship with your family where you have a good relationship with your child. That is, if you haven't disowned your family yet because your son came out as gay or something. And they love you. They, they will want to ensure you have help. And that is a beautiful thing that a child should do for their parents and is very respectful. Nice save, Lauren. <laughs> that is if your kids even like you and 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 take care of you, which is a good thing that, that, that which is a good thing that people should do. Happy families, happy families. My world is a nice world. My world is a nice world. It is not a disgusting and cold world where women are talked about like egg cartons. Please, please. But it's also very difficult, especially when your kid is trying to get their life established. And most hey, Paul, thank you very much for the five dollars. Let me bring this up. Lauren's probably afraid the great replacement is happening in the next 25 years and worried the whites will get behind and never be able to catch up. Unironically, yes. Unironically, Lauren, that 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 is basically exactly what Lauren thinks. I'm sorry. I don't buy that she's moved away from the great replacement stuff in the slightest. Not even in the slightest. I don't think she's I don't fucking buy it. I don't fucking buy it. Importantly, the average age for having kids today is around 30 years. So if you have your kid at 50, you will be 80 when your child has their first child. So likely either gone already or approaching the end of your life. And... What the fuck? That's the average, Lauren. That's the average like life expectancy. That means 50% of people live beyond that. <laughs> when you see your grandchildren, you'll already be dead. Or you'll be such a decrepit corpse that it wouldn't even matter. Fuck old people. Holy shit, Lauren is projecting so hard. This is, this is unironically a woman who is so scared of her own mortality that it shows in her content. Childbirth, quite frankly, is a milestone every kid wants their parents to be there for. And more so, having grandparents there to support new families is a massive benefit. It's actually been studied and found that the involvement of grandparents significantly increases a child's well-being. With wow. children who have high- Wow, it's almost like having a supportive family is awesome. Hey, Lauren, I wonder what your opinions are on support of members, uh, on families being supportive to their LGBT family members. Huh. Hmm. Grandparent involvement in their life. Make sure that you maintain your grandparent relationships so that grandparents can increase your child improvement quotient by 3.5 it has been shown in data that grandparents are a nice thing to have for children because they will increase the likelihood of your child becoming a productive member of society by 34.2 percent having fewer emotional and behavioral problems which honestly should not be a surprise to anyone I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all, even if it just helped. Retcon says, I love how she's out of breath at 26, but people easily play football until they're in their 40s. Yeah, well, look, I don't think that Lauren is the pinnacle of health, okay? The, the child and their stress and mental health as well. I personally have a friend who is deliberately 
moving back in with her mother. Oh, this is the okay. This, I wonder if this is the trans friend who also did uh, 250 grueling experiments with uh, in vitro fertilization, who was also prescribed hormones at age 10. Um, I wonder if that's the same person. Do you think it's the same friend? She always has a friend. Have you noticed that? Every time she needs to, to bring up a thing, she just says, I have a friend. Father-in-law because they need more support with the kids for her mental health, for their marriage. It's, of course, a cliche, but it literally takes a village to raise children. And the more the... Takes a village to raise children. Advocates for the nuclear family. Hmm. Hmm. Does she need to look up this friend's name? <laughs> Marrier. Now, I want to reiterate, I am not saying any of this to put people down. <laughs> True magic goldfish. Doesn't drinking alcohol while snickering about dead indigenous children decrease your fertility? Who's going to tell Lauren? Somebody tell Lauren the hard truth. True. I'm not saying this to discourage older couples from having kids. I have a family friend who had her kids in her 40s and is the freaking best mother. Again! Is this the same friend? They're out there. I am also not saying any of this. Lauren, I have a friend who had their first child at 80. They had their first grandchild at 120. They are kicking. They're doing great. They just, uh, see, they use the advanced, uh, shrigma female technique of holding in their eggs. Um, and they, uh, up, they, they bought a self-refrigeration unit for their own vagina. It's like an ice cube that you jam up in there and it keeps the eggs cold and fresh. And so, uh, uh they were able to have a, uh, a baby at 80 and it was fucking awesome. Shrigma female, am I right? biological or sociological staff to be like gotcha man you have weaknesses too you've got an expiry date no more than this is a gotcha against women i say all this I'm sorry what just happened can we try this again biological or sociological staff to be like gotcha man you have weaknesses too you've got an expiry date no more than this you've got an expiry date. what the fuck is wrong with this Lauren is such a sad individual. It really is pathetic. You remember how I said that, like, tankies are, like, joyless hacks who have no fun in their lives and they take everything too seriously? Lauren fits that same problem. Lauren is just a joyless, unhappy, like, obviously, b just blatantly unhappy person. Well, good faith actor, you you are you are the good tanky. That's true. That's true. You are the good tanky. You're the one good tanky that we know. And I do agree. You probably do have a good life. You probably do. This is a gotcha against women. I say all this because I believe in informed decision making, and I respect you guys enough to not just make a clickbait video about how the other gender is trash and how age is just a number and you're some superhuman who can do and have all you want because deep down we know that's nonsense what is she talking about she's just crying this isn't even a point she's like you don't get to have anything that you want life has been so mean when i left my 1488 tiffany bracelet at paul joseph watson's house <laughs> i couldn't handle it anymore Shut the fuck up, Lauren. Sense, and it is. There will be guys in the toxic corners of the manosphere that will want you to think you can have kids forever as men with no downsides because their whole grift is telling men what they want to hear, not what will actually help them. That's what you're doing. You're literally doing that right now. You're appealing to another group of men, Lauren. Lauren, you're saying that you're grifting by appealing to men. You're appealing to just a different demographic of men. You talk about women by calling them egg cartons. You talk about yourself as though you have an expiration date. Lauren, holy fucking shit. You need to get some self-awareness. Oh my god. 
same way feminist script with the eternal fertility myth stuff is telling women what they I've literally never heard a feminist talk about the eternal fertility grift. And also, just so you know, the person the person that I learned about like fertility from was a feminist. I took a sex ed class that was run by a radical feminist. I'm talking like uh somebody who grew up they they, they became a feminist professor in the second wave of feminism. So they're like, that's like the hardcore feminists. That's like the feminist, like Andrea Dworkin, who were, who like argued that like all penetrative sex is rape. And that's where she started. And like, she was the one who taught me about the fact that like eggs age. Like, what are you fucking talking about? This is just made up. Were they a political feminist? What do you mean by that? They were super political. If that, if you're asking if they were politically involved, they were super political. Want here and how? Are you asking they... if they were a political lesbian? No, they weren't. They were straight. They were pretty straight. They were pretty open about their straightness. But they were very extreme. They were wonderful, by the way. Um, just just so that we're clear, like that teacher was amazing and super supportive of me when I when I came out as trans. Um, but they did. They started their degree in second wave feminism. They got their degree and then they continued to grow. Honestly, an amazing person. Not going to lie. Just totally awesome person. But, uh, like, I love her. She was so good. I remember her, but still. Yeah. She, was, she wasn't a second wave feminist anymore, but she started in the second wave. So, pretty extreme feminist who was the one who taught me about that. You don't need no man. Not what will actually help them. Not Magic goldfish? Okay, hold on. I should say something. Magic Goldfish says, I hope some of those old school feminists have been able to heal. I think people who believe all penetration is rape are deeply traumatized. Uh, just so you know, that a lot of that is taken out of context. Like, I was being a little bit trite there for the purpose of the joke, but, like, that is a theoretical position, an analytical position. It's not, like, even Dworkin wouldn't have argued that you're, like, personally bad or you're being personally violated for having penetrative sex they're they're arguing an analytical and theoretical position saying that sociologically and i still don't agree with their conclusion by the way but their argument was that sociologically you can't you can't consent to existing under the patriarchy everyone is born every woman is born into the patriarchy and they are passively coerced their entire lives that was the argument it wasn't literally it wasn't a literally every single penetrative experience is actually rape their argument was a theoretical and societal one i, I still don't agree with their conclusions but uh i do think it's it's important to make that distinction not that i think anyone needs men or women in their life but Hating the opposite sex and using fertility myths as a weapon against them or to justify your lack of need for them is- Again, Lauren telling anybody about hating the opposite sex when Lauren describes her friends as empty egg cartons? An industry of circle jerk misery that will never get you what you actually want, which in most cases, if you spend ridiculous amounts of time obsessing over the other sex, well, constantly claiming to hate them, I find what these people usually want deep down is just affection and love from the opposite sex. And they feel that it's easier to hate them than to confront that lack of or perceived lack of love. This is where that thin line between love and hate comes from. Bitter people who do not acknowledge their bitterness will not help you. Yeah, they just want to make more again. people be bitter like them or use their platform to try and justify their own life failures and mistakes to others by advertising it as the ideal life. Please just be wary of these people. Anyways, this was a video about fertility. Clearly I want to do a separate video on the gender wars, which I will. But to conclude things, children are freaking amazing. I love being a mom. I also understand it's not for everyone. And honestly, if you are someone in my audience who does not want kids, Please don't have them. I mean, I, I want kids to have parents who want kids. That's ideal. I also deeply understand for some, not having kids is not something that's their own choice. So please. Uh. I love her change in tone. See, Lauren has this problem where she's so smug all the time that she still sounds smug even when she attempts to change tone.
Like, watch this. She goes in the watch. You can watch this happen in real time. Her from going to psychotically smiling to that's very sad. Watch. Kids. That's ideal. I also deeply understand for some not You you don't you shouldn't have kids if you don't want to. And I understand also that some people cannot have kids. And even though I said that any woman who can't have kids is an empty egg carton. Having kids is not something that's their own choice. So please, uh, it makes me so mad when I see people just poking individuals who don't have kids because I I've literally watched Lauren people get you did that you did that Lauren you're t you just you self-reported earlier sussy Lauren Lauren Sussern is what we're dealing with over here Lauren you literally self-reported and told on yourself for doing that to your friends harassment on Twitter who I know are having infertility issues get harassed why don't you have kids where are your kids guys 9% of men and 11% of women will have fertility issues and that is a huge number and if you are one of those people in my audience struggling with fertility issues I want you to know your value does not come from your fertility and I truly yeah listen just because you're an empty egg carton that your value doesn't come from your fertility I know you're not a full egg carton like me and you're a, a sad, greasy, uh, cardboard, soggy egg carton that's been left in the back of a dumpster. But I promise you, your value does not come from whether or not you're a greasy, dilapidated egg carton or a full egg carton like me. I believe that if you have this deep desire to be a mother or a father but can't do so, uh, God yeah, has another- Magic Goldfish says, being an empty egg carton that nobody wants. Here, I'll do it. I'm going to do it in Lauren Southern uh, 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 style. Here we go. <laughs> if you don't have kids by 35, you're basically an empty egg carton. But listen, even if you're an empty egg carton that nobody wants, that's valid. Uwu. That's very valid to be an empty, unwanted, crone, hag, egg carton unlike me a full egg carton that is being bought at the local grocery store <laughs> anyway if you don't have kids by 35 that's because i can't be as disingenuous like lauren is disingenuous on a level that actually makes me sick purpose for that motherly or fatherly love you have there are a lot of people out there who um who need it even if it's not from their biological parents yeah. Um, infertility and fertility in general, I believe, is one of the most misunderstood and poorly yeah. communicated subjects in our modern culture. Yeah, anyway, so, um, infertility. I'm sorry, I can't do I'm, I'm being sure. And I think part of that is because a lot of our media class do not represent the average family-oriented individual. And therefore, they write about weird, obscure problems like gendered signage on porta potties in New York or whatever instead of massive medical and... Bitch, you just made a video called The Myth of Eternal Fertility, a thing that nobody believes in and nobody has ever believed in. And you're inventing a straw man to make yourself seem more serious? Psychological problems like miscarriages and fertility crisis that more people than you think are struggling with. And I really do hope that this video has filled that gap a bit and given you all some good information that isn't often talked about for your future family planning. Realistic expectations and odds so you don't end up I don't know, putting all your eggs in one basket or one freezer. <laughs> or one egg carton, Lauren. Let me ask you this. If Lauren is correct, why would any dude, why would any dude in the entire planet, if Lauren is correct, why would any dude ever have just one egg basket? It follows from her own logic that dudes should be as, should be fucking polygamous. If women expire at an earlier rate, men should have, like, fucking harems. Is that what she's trying to tell us? Is she trying to tell us her kink chat? Is that what's trying to happen? So to speak, on things like IVF without understanding that it's not a sure thing. <sighs> but anyways, I love you guys. I appreciate the heck out of you all. Thank you so much for those who are supporting me on Subscribestar and making these little videos possible. And I will see you at the next rant.
What am I doing with my hand? Okay, I'm gonna go blow my nose. video appreciate the heck out of you all thank you so much for those who are supporting me on subscribe star making these little videos possible and i will see you at the next ramped at the next framped like king seeker framped